Locating the North Star is quite easy on a clear night. The only thing you need to do is find the Big Dipper. Those two stars on the end of the Dipper's cup point the way to the North Star. See? It's the tip of the handle of the Little Dipper, or the tail of the Little Bear. It's in the constellation Ursa Minor, over there. People have been watching the North Star for centuries. This bright star is also known as Polaris. It's situated almost directly over our planet's North Pole, which makes it a great landmark for a traveler without a compass, or a GPS on their smartphone. It's also Earth's closest Cepheid. That's what we call a star that pulses regularly in brightness and diameter. Polaris is also part of a binary system of two stars. It's got a dimmer sister. It's known as Polaris B. You can actually see it circling the North Stars from Earth. But the more astronomers watch Polaris, the less they understand. The problem is, no one can agree on how big or distant the star is. Scientists have several ways to estimate the mass, age, and distance of a star like Polaris. One method is called the Stellar Evolution Method. After studying the brightness, color, and rate of pulsation of a star, Experts use this data to figure out how big or bright it is, as well as what stage of life it's in. Once these details are clear, it's not hard to find out how far a star actually is. It's simple math once you know the luminosity of a star in real life and how dim it looks from our planet. Such models are especially precise for stars like Polaris because the rate of their pulsing is directly related to their brightness. This makes it easy to figure out the distance to any of those stars. Astronomers trust this method so much that Cepheids have become an important tool for measuring distances all across the universe. At the same time, there are other ways to study the North Star, and they don't agree with the stellar evolution models. Polaris is a so-called astrometric binary. It means you can see its companion going around it, it looks as if a circle is being drawn around the bigger star. To complete one orbit, the smaller star needs around 26 years. Even though astronomers haven't made detailed observations of Polaris B's full circuit, they've seen enough to know what its orbit looks like. Using this information, one can apply Newton's laws of gravity to calculate the masses of the two stars. Combined with the Hubble Space Telescope's new measurements, these calculations lead to very precise numbers. Polaris is supposed to be around 3.45 times the mass of the Sun, but that's much less than the mass you get from stellar evolution models. They suggest a value of almost 7 times the mass of the Sun. But there's another reason why this star system is weird. After calculating the ages of the stars, Researchers concluded that Polaris B is much older than its bigger sibling, but it's extremely unusual for a binary system. Normally, both stars are of the same age. One explanation might be that at least one of the measurements is simply wrong. After all, Polaris is a difficult star to study. Since it's positioned above our planet's North Pole, it's outside the field of view of most telescopes. As for those telescopes that do have the needed equipment for measuring the star's properties precisely, they're typically used for studying much more distant and fainter stars. Polaris is simply too bright for such instruments. It blinds them. There's a theory that the main star of the Polaris system was once two stars, but they collided a few million years ago. Such a binary collision could rejuvenate stars by pulling in extra material and making the stars look as if they went through the fountain of youth. It would also explain some other oddities, since stars that appear as a result of binary collisions don't fit stellar evolution models. Unfortunately, so far, none of the theories have been confirmed. The North Star is actually a big deal. Earth is spinning non-stop, which causes the sun to rise and set and stars to travel across the sky. Our planet is also tilted. That's why we have seasons. If we drew a line through the axis Earth spins around and extended it over 300 light years past the North Pole, at the end of that imaginary line, there would be the North Star. It stays almost exactly at the same spot in the sky at all times and always points the way north. It's really important for navigation. People heavily relied on it in the days before GPS. If you were standing on the equator, Polaris would be right at the horizon. At the North Pole, it would seem to be right over your head. 
In other words, using the star's height in the sky, you can not only figure out the needed direction, but also understand where you are on Earth. Curiously, there's no South Star. There isn't a bright enough star right above the South Pole. But one day we might get such a star. When you spin a top on the table, its end moves in a circle. We know this phenomenon as precession. Earth behaves in the same way, and the North and South Poles won't always point towards the same spots in the sky. In the next 26,000 years, it may cause the North Star to change from Polaris to a few other stars and back again. One day, the title of the North Star will go to Vega. It's the fifth brightest star in the night sky and the second brightest in the northern celestial hemisphere. Vega has another name, Alpha Lyrae. That's because it's the main star of the Lyra constellation. Vega has been one of the most crucial stars to people since ancient times. It's very bright and blue, hence very recognizable. Vega was the North Star several thousand years ago, and it'll regain this status in 12,000 years or so. This star is located a mere 25 light years from Earth. It's just 450 million years old, which makes it way younger than our own 4.6 billion year old star system. Astronomers study Vega to learn more about star systems in the early stages of their formation. Vega is almost directly overhead at mid-northern latitudes on a summer night. It hides behind the horizon for only 7 hours a day. You can see it on any night of the year. If you travel farther south, you'll find out that Vega lies below the horizon for longer periods of time. But in Alaska, northern Canada, and some parts of Europe, Vega never sets. Vega's blue-white light is bright enough to be featured a lot in ancient cultures, from the Chinese, to the Polynesians, to the Hindus. Vega's name can also be translated as falling or swooping. This is a reference to the times when people regarded this constellation as a swooping vulture, not a leer. Vega was also the first star to get photographed, other than the sun, of course. To do it, astronomers at Harvard College Observatory used a 15-inch refractor, and it happened again in 1850. Around two decades later, an amateur astronomer broke down Vega's light to reveal various elements making up the star. In 2006, thanks to telescopic observations, scientists found out that Vega was whipping around so fast that its poles were several thousand degrees warmer than its equator. The star rotates every 12.5 hours and is at 90% of its critical rotation speed. That's the velocity at which an object can tear itself apart. In 2013, researchers announced that they had discovered an asteroid belt around Vega. It means there might be planets somewhere out there among space rocks. There are two areas, an outer region that contains icy asteroids and an inner region with warmer space rocks. Scientists can examine bright stars like Vega using NASA's mission called TESS, which stands for Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. It was launched in 2018 to conduct an all-sky survey. The main goal of this mission is to search for exoplanets, but the satellite can also look for star variability. By examining such stars as Vega, TESS can help scientists learn more about the early stages of star evolution. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.